one last master class of this season. I would like to thank our faculty in charge, Mr. Malikarjun Rao sir and Mr. Arvind Babu sir. And I'm also grateful for our president Sadhvika, Vice President Ananya and General Secretary Sneha and the entire core committee for supporting and making this series a big hit. We introduce our speaker of this session, Mr. Haider Hussain. Haider is a graduate from information technology and currently working as a Google uh, at working at, at Google as an IT resident. He was the external manager, relation manager for CBIT open source community. He also worked as a software intern at Focus Solution and Caravel AI as a front end developer. He also worked on a COVID tracker project. He was the charge DFS of CBIT MN and also been a photographer for many TED conferences. He completed many uh, courses with nine major credentials. In this session, he is keen to throw light on the recruitment of one of the biggest company in the world, Google, and provide a roadmap uh, of, of making your journey epic. So, hi, Haider. Thank you so much for making this session. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. Yeah. So, firstly, Haider, how are you doing and how is working at Google feel like? Um, I've been doing well. I mean, I'm a little tired, but then yeah, I'm doing well. But yeah, it's been three weeks since I joined Google now. The culture here is extremely amazing. The people here are very smart. So a few of the people who joined with me, they already have their masters. So that results in an inferiority complex. I mean, thinking that, you know, um, they must be having a lot more knowledge than I do. But Again, like I said, the people are very helpful. I can just reach out to them if I have any questions. So yeah. Uh, that's great. I think you will figure out like meantime. So let's dive into the uh, technical session without any delay. So first of all, who is an IT resident and what role does he play in the company? Yeah. So um, IT residents are basically people who you know uh work on Google's core infrastructure and deliver it to the end users. So for example, let's say there are like thousands of roles in Google, all right. And not every role requires you to know the entire infrastructure of Google. But as an IT resident, you need to know how networking takes place at Google and how do you give access. So by default, when Google gives you laptops or when you know when you uh, join Google, you don't get access to a lot of internal resources. So for example, when I was an intern, I wasn't given access to go to the code base, the entire code base of Google because I was an intern. So there are certain roles where uh, you'll have to request access and things like um, help. Let's say there's a VP of a pro uh, project, uh, some internal product that he's working on. He needs access for another application, let's say. So he's coming up with an, he's coming up with one application. He needs access. He needs some code of the other application. So he'll need access to that particular repository. And you'll have to give him the access for that particular repository. There are people who will try to SSH it into their own workstations. So, and if they have any problems in SSHing into their own workstations, you'll help them out. So basically, this is like helping people who are already working for Google. Right. And then at the same time, as an IT resident, you're not confined to a single uh, team. So let's say being an IT resident, I can also work on Google Pay. I can come up with a feature and write a code for Google Pay. At the same time, I can also work for Google Search. Being an IT resident doesn't, I mean, make me confined to a single team. I can be open. I can contribute to any project that I want. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Uh, like, are there any other specific uh, differences between a usual employee and an IT resident? Suppose like any work and environment or something like that. So basically now, um, like I said, there are many roles at Google. So let's say a site reliability engineer, he gets a laptop. All right. And uh, before we issue, like since it's work from, since it's work from home, before we issue any particular device to a person, we also think that, okay, fine. Does this guy, does his work require this product? Yes or no. So let's say if you're uh, into project management or uh, something related to something not related to coding at all. You wouldn't need a MacBook, right? You'll go for a Chrome OS that is like completely web-based. You can use Google Docs and everything on a Chromebook. So, and a, a software engineer or a UI UX designer, 
things like those we give them macbooks uh, for software engineers we give uh, linux desktops for ui ux engineers we give macbooks so as an ID, the difference between a usual employee and an it resident is that it resident probably gets everything that i mean uh, what do you say a head gets in a team so i the, right now i have like many devices with me i have a macbook pro that they gave i have a chromebook i have monitors and all because that is required for my job role so if a googler is having a problem running something on a macbook i need to have a macbook to make sure that i solve that particular problem if he's having a problem with windows i need to have a windows laptop to make sure that you know i solve the issue and uh, there's not much difference between a usual employee other than the fact that you know it resident has more access to things than a normal employee does that's cool uh, and again you know uh, after getting you know after you getting uh, shortlisted as for uh, internship uh, like you went there with certain expectations right so are there uh, the, those are those expectations uh, the reality over there okay so um initially when i got shortlisted to be honest i never really thought that i got, i i i i'll ever get shortlisted reason being i had, had like the least gpa among all the people who applied for it probably and um i also thought that people i mean this was basically one of the people from google i guess they came to our college and they told us about the internship but this thing was like nationwide so anyone sitting in uh, delhi can apply as well all right so the, the thing that came to my mind initially was okay fine there are way too many people there there'll be people from iits and nits as well will be applying for the same role that i am and they'll probably be having a better gpa so when i applied initially i took a shot i mean i was pretty sure i wouldn't get it but i took a shot um after the first round i was like okay fine now that i got shortlisted there were around five people i guess who who were shortlisted from our college so and all those people had like a better gpa and a 9 point uh, things like that so i said okay fine now that i got shortlisted i cleared the first round but okay fine let's I, i'm not going to cross the second round for sure but let's see so i prepared for that and then eventually when i got to know that i got selected only then i went on google and i searched how does a google office look like you know uh, uh, what perks do google employees get things like those so when i got selected I, again i was extremely excited I was like okay fine i'm going to work at this office i'm going to have these kind of perks and you know i i made up my mind i was like okay i'll go in the morning at around 7 o'clock i'll stay there they have like proper buffet for uh, lunch breakfast dinner i like i'll stay there till 11 o'clock in the night i'll come back all i'll do is that but 12 days after i got selected i got a message i mean i got an email saying uh, because of i mean and that was a time when we our country went into lockdown so everything was shut basically so i got an email saying we are going to move it to work from home for now and let's see how it goes so initially it was supposed to be for 3 months so i thought i'll get to meet a lot of people and then obviously connections also matter i thought i'll make good connections and then i'll i mean i'll get that kind of exposure but the day that i got to know it's going to be remote i was a bit skeptical about how my experience would be but i mean the way they worked i mean the way the google work in order to make my work from home experience extremely well was mind blowing i mean i didn't expect this i had everything on time i mean the way they communicated the way they made me feel like okay fine even though your internship is going to be online you're not going to lose out on anything so like i told you networking at google is very important so even even though the internship was online they came up with an initiative called something called virtual coffee ninja where you know you can i had an option of signing up so i was extremely excited i wanted to meet new people i went ahead and i signed up for it and everyone like they were probably only two interns two interns from india were selected so the other person didn't opt but then i opted for it and then i set it on every day so it was like i wanted to meet every like a new person every single day so the virtual coffee ninja worked like i mean it it was an algorithm basically where it matches people with similar interests all right so that way i got to meet a lot of people at a very high position i mean i i got to meet a vice president of a product at a, a very high i mean position and then uh, you know these uh, youtube shorts those reels kind of thing right so i got to meet the person who's leading that for youtube things like those so i was able to connect as well i made a lot of connections even though it was virtual i never met my manager i never met my co-intern but then 
the amount of meetings that we had in those two months were brilliant and i mean i loved even though it was online i loved every bit of it and that was the reason why you know it motivated me to work hard for my interviews after my internship so that i'll get into it again i mean i'll get into google again yeah it seems that your journey has many twists but at end of the day like it's important that you have made it to google and you are happy pretty happy with it yeah so, so moving on to you know recruitment segment it's one of the uh, main segment in this session so can you take us through your recruitment process you know which might end up in turn up helping growing our recruitment yeah so um i don't think google came last time i mean uh this year i mean this year they came for 2023 graduates but i don't think they came for 2022 so basically our process it was the first time that google was hiring it interns from india especially from india they had it interns before but the time when i was interviewing it was the first time they were going to hire for i mean it interns from india so the process the initial i guess the initial stage was um it required us to upload our resume and there was a question like i mean why do you want to join google and you had to record like a minutes video and then upload it on the portal so that was the first round and then i tried you know i mean again i had that thing in my mind okay fine it's google I- i'm pretty sure i'm not going to get it so i i just i didn't even update my resume i just went ahead and i just i mean i just applied for the sake of applying and then the video was fine i mean i told why i wanted to join google and why i actually wanted to join google i told him that i didn't google anything so i did that that was the first round second round i guess they shortlisted 70% of people um from the first round and then we had a technical test there we had concept like oops dbms networking os troubleshooting kind of questions i i don't remember the duration of that test but i guess it was for 2 hours i'm not sure and after that they took some time they i guess they took 2 or 3 weeks and then they shortlisted people they shortlisted four people basically so uh, i mean four of us we had like a meeting one day before i mean three or four days before our scheduled technical interviews so initially they told that everyone will go through two technical interviews for the internship but i guess for two people they made it one and they told like okay fine if you go through these i mean if you if your feedback on this interview is good then we'll conduct another one so for me i mean they told that we'll have two interviews for you and i had like two interviews scheduled on the same day so from the day that i got shortlisted to the day that i had my interview i had like what four or uh, five or six days i guess so i mean i started preparing i tried everything i could i mean i went through resources that were available online but then yeah i mean every everyone will do that i mean all the four people i guess who got shortlisted they must have done that so after that i had my first technical interview in the morning before i came to college so i attended the interview at around 8:30 i guess and the interview lasted for 45 minutes and that was the first round and my second round was scheduled in the evening at around 8:30 pm and both of them were uh, i mean both of my interviews were in from india one was from australia i guess and one was from us so the thing about these interviewers i mean i also applied for amazon as well i gave an interview there so i mean i the experience that i had going through google's interview and then amazon's interview was extremely like different amazon interview i mean that person he probably didn't even turn on his camera so i didn't even know if i was answering right or no looking at his i mean looking at looking at his reactions but at google those people were so nice i mean even if i was getting stuck at some point they were trying to help me out it was it wasn't like an interview it was more like a conversation between two people about tech all right so yeah after those two interviews i guess the recruiter called me and like i told you i didn't even update my resume back then i just applied so my recruiter called me and she was like uh, can you send can you please send me your updated resume and then also your transcripts so i did that i came home from college i submitted and then i waited for like another 15 days one week i guess yeah after 7 days i got another call from recruiter saying you know i mean they might consider you i'm not going to tell you that they're considering you but they might consider you will you be up for it so obviously i said yes it's like my dream come true i would obviously go for it then after like 4 or 5 days i got an official email saying i got selected so that was the process 
that was an incredible journey and moving to the interview google is undoubtedly you know one of the biggest internet company at present so how can we prepared for something that big okay so okay now this i mean it depends so you can obviously prepare i mean the interview process is same for almost all the companies nowadays you have to focus on your data structures and then you have to focus on your os concepts that is like the initial test for each and every company nowadays let it be google or let it be a startup you have to go through the same process but the way they ask questions is different so for my interview especially for my interview because i had a project on data structures in my resume they asked me questions about that first but then obviously you have like a lot a lot of material once you google like uh, things like you know uh, how do i prepare for a google interview you will find hundreds of links where people hundreds or 200 of 200 software engineers will tell you okay this is how you should go right you should prepare like this you should prepare like that but you have, like obviously you have to go through all the material that you think is important and when i got shortlisted they gave me certain resources they were like you you might get asked questions on these topics all right so i i mean i focused on those topics so they will tell you they'll also tell you which platform to follow so let's say lead code medium i focus more on lead code medium questions things like those but um, at the same time your i mean your learning your prep does matter but your practical exposure also matters now for my interview apart from data structures we also had uh, networking concepts operating system concepts like right? uh, and uh, how do you troubleshoot a system things like those and the th having theoretical knowledge helps to some extent but until and unless you do something practical i don't think you'll be able to solve the problem a problem that you've never seen before right so i mean okay for example let's say you want to reinstall i mean let's say your os got corrupted and you want to re i mean reinstall a fresh version of that particular windows version so you might go and go let's say if you're you if, if you're just preparing for the sake of the interview you'll just go and google how do you install an os that person i mean whoever wrote that blog will tell you you have to follow these steps and yeah here you are uh, you've installed your os but until and unless you actually install it on your system i i don't think you'll be able to answer questions so when my uh i mean when my i mean when my interviewer asked me a question i told him the steps that were available on google and that person was like did you encounter any problems so how would you tell that interviewer if you encountered any problems or not if you hadn't actually installed the software right so i had a problem i remember i had a problem partitioning the disk into two i mean separate one for uh, ubuntu and one for windows i had a problem and i told him that the interviewer was like okay fine i know that okay fine so now i know that you actually did install a version on your laptop but uh, and you got a problem right how do you solve it how did you go in and solve it so i knew the steps that i took to solve the problem i was able to tell him that so having theoretical knowledge is important but at the same time you should be having practical knowledge because um another thing that i told during my interview was uh, not during my interview i guess but yeah actually during my interview that person asked me about something related to wifi or networking if i had any experience in that so again this was a problem that i faced on my own and i did something to my router that i could tell i could go in detail i was like okay this was the ip address that would lead to me things like dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol domain name system i worked i mean i worked with those so i know how they work and i i could explain them but if you just go through theoretical knowledge okay let's say um they might ask you uh any commands for network troubleshooting so you have things like ip config if config uh trace rt and netstat things like those so if you go through a blog you'll read if config will give me the ip address of my i mean my computer that i'm using uh trace rt will give me um uh, will give me a way to investigate where my packet is being dropped right but how will the output be i won't know that until and unless i run the command myself so when i ran the trace rt command i saw okay fine my packet was dropping at this particular router over here there's not a problem with my router there's not a problem with someone else's router there's a problem with the isp the internet service provider his router had a problem so things like those so theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge matter a lot not just theoretical okay, you definitely made it look so easy the process 
and again as you mentioned you know you like there are thousands of different websites when you ask for the google interview are there any particular website that you follow um see for my interview i knew that they'll ask me some like good amount of data structure questions so i did lead code medium and lead code easy things like those but again lead code is obviously 100% important lead code and then hacker rank for your to get your basics right code chef yes you can take part uh in i mean uh the competitions that you have but i haven't done that so i can't talk about that but lead code and again geek for geeks tutorials point all these are extremely helpful if you want to learn few concepts i mean yeah these three these three are the main i guess lead code and geek for geeks i'm pretty sure like you must you guys must be knowing this but yeah that's great uh and coming to the interviews uh there are going to be two interview rounds no how are the questions going to be in this uh, interview what are the general questions to, that uh, recruiters ask during the interviews mm, all right so in obviously like for any interview you'll have the initial question as in how do you tell me about yourself things like those and they'll, the initial like first half of your interview will go down for like it will go for you explaining your project so for 30 minutes you explain your uh, i mean work that you did in internship or uh, the project that you worked on and then if they find an interesting project they'll ask you so you shouldn't i mean go ahead and put something on your resume that you don't know right because you won't be able to explain so initial 30 35 minutes will go like that for me at least it was like that and then the next 15 minutes was two questions regarding networking and troubleshooting i guess and uh, and my first interview ended with a data structure questions on, on hash maps all right i don't remember the exact question because it's been a while but yeah that was the first interview the second interview was pretty much the same so basically the reason why they conducted two interviews was because they didn't want to take one interviewer's opinion so let's say i mean your interviewer's opinion i mean your interviewer's mood also matters right so what if he was in a bad mood and even though you did well the interviewer might not like you or maybe you know his wife was angry with him he had a bad mood and then he gave a negative feedback right and you might miss on a miss out on a good candidate just because of this interviewer's mood so they conducted i mean they, i think at least i mean at least i think that that was the reason and they conducted another interview and then they got a feedback from there as well so let's say if you get um two good feedbacks they'll go with your application right if they give if they get one bad feedback and one good feedback then they'll probably schedule another interview if they get two bad feedbacks you're rejected there so yeah is that some sort of the interview again are there any specific skills you know the recruiter is looking for in a specific candidate um that depends on the role that you're applying for so let i mean again like for an it resident you need to have decent amount of experience in coding you have need to have a decent amount of experience in networking and troubleshooting so your recruiter for that particular role will focus you on, will focus on these particular skills apart from these there there is something called googliness inside google you, if, if you ask i mean every person they'll give a different definition of googliness so for me if you ask i'd say googliness is something where i mean you know where i'm i where i can help people if they have any problem i i'll i mean i'll be able to help them for me i think that is googliness if you if you are able to help your peers out right but for different people it's a different definition so they'll also see i mean how you're different from because you see there there are like lakhs or thousands of people applying to google every day so you need to have something and there are a lot of people who have i mean who are way more who have may more may way more experience than i do right and they 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 must be from iits and nits as well so you have to have something different from these people in order to i mean stand out that depends again on your extracurricular activities the way you gave your interview i mean were you like extremely silent were you telling the interviewer your thought process so let's say you're solving a problem okay your interviewer asks you a question you're solving a problem you don't just keep quiet for like one minute and then you know okay fine i'm thinking don't disturb things like those and then you think for a minute and then tell the interviewer the solution all right it also depends on how let's see when i when i was giving my interview if i was stuck somewhere 
I was like reading. Okay. I mean, I was speaking out. Okay, okay, I'll do this. Okay, I can do this over here. Okay, if I do this, the complexity and everything. Okay, I mean, I was telling them if I do this, it will be a bit more complicated. Maybe if I use this particular thing, um, this this will give me a better complexity. Things like those. So, I mean, the way you it it matters on everything. The way you talk, the way you are as a person, your extracurricular activities and things like those. Yeah. Uh, another important criteria during inter I mean recruitment, at least a few companies is GPA. So what is the weightage of the GPA in, in Google? So, yeah, again, like I told you, I had a very less GPA. So if Google had a GPA criteria, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even uh, be. I mean, I wouldn't even have gotten through the first round, but there are again companies. So I made a mistake and I know I should have studied hard in my initial four semesters, but then initially I thought I'll only study for knowledge. I mean, I don't care about the marks, all right? So I used to bunk classes and things like those. Th that was in, in initial four semesters. But then then I realized like they work. So basically there are two types of companies, right? You have few companies who have a certain GPA criteria and most of the companies right now they do. So if you want to sit for a company, you need to have 6.5 or higher. So GPA, it matters then when you i mean gpa obviously matters you it's it's i mean it's not harmful if you have a better gpa right so it's it will always help you but then google doesn't have a gpa requirement and companies like google they don't have a gpa requirement so let's say uh, a, a person with even 5 gpa can apply apply to google can apply to facebook can apply to netflix things like those and companies like service now deloitte and these companies they have a certain gpa criteria but these companies don't. And I feel that that is one of the reasons why these companies are doing better. I mean, just because, I mean, I feel that just because I have a less GPA doesn't mean, I mean, I feel that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys must be having a good GPA and you must be, you must also be having good technical experience, but I'm just telling, just because I, I have a bad GPA doesn't mean that I don't have the technical knowledge that it requires. So people with nine GPA can have lesser practical knowledge than I do. I'm just telling, I mean, I'm pretty sure people have higher knowledge than I do, but I'm just telling. So companies like these, again, Fang, Facebook, Amazon, I don't think they look at your GPA. If you're going off campus, again, if you're going through college, they might have a GPA thing. And obviously having a better GPA will help you in your masters and your MBA. And that is the thing that I regret the most now because I should have worked harder. I mean, I could have worked harder, but I didn't. So yeah, I it doesn't hurt. Myself to you. So again, uh, you know, after internship, on what basis or how does this conversion happen from internship to PPO? Right, so my internship lasted for eight weeks. That is two months and into I, I had an interview I had like so basically I gave like two interviews initially before my internship to get the internship and then inside Google I had another two interviews and then once I was done with my internship I had another interview right so and the, again like I said people that are helpful and they conducted they conducted I mean uh, mock interviews for me inside Google so that helped me I used to have interviews with people with inter like with people who generally take interviews so i used to have mock interviews with them they used to give me a feedback okay heather i see that you you're good at this but i feel like you can improve in this then i worked on this because i knew now that i'm good at this i can work on this right so um yeah that helped and again the the work that you do during your internship is like the most important thing because you worked eight weeks over there, you must have done something for them, right? And the way you present also matters. So I worked on a dashboard. I worked on adding a feature to an existing product over there. And then I came up with a project that can help people. I mean, that can help my managers. I mean, all the managers at Google um, to, you know, analyze what their, uh, what the people under them are doing. So let's say if someone is working on helping someone or someone is working on tickets, let's say, I mean, helping other people. So how, I mean, and when you solve a ticket, the Googler will have an option of giving you a feedback, right? So if it's a good feedback, if it's a bad, I basically I prepared a dashboard 
for managers to i mean analyze okay where this person is going wrong or how as a team they are doing so that was like one of the uh, major things that i did during my internship apart from that i we also had like virtual scavenger hunt things like those um that were that were conducted online so i came first in that out of all the interns that were there so out of like uh, interns worldwide and that helped me because i was able to put that in my there is something called artifacts that you make uh, after your internship uh, listing what all you did so taking part in those competitions and getting those prizes also helped me so that is like the major thing that helped me to get the ppo apart from all these things that i did inside google i also had to prepare for like i i guess in total i gave around um five interviews so two before internship two during internship and then one was like the final one after internship after internship they gave me like two weeks to prepare for the interview and then uh, i prepared hard i mean as much as i could for the two weeks after yeah and my interview lasted what for like an hour and then after that yeah th- pretty much it those were the five things again they were, like i told you there were two interns from india so there was another intern along with me she was from delhi so now what happened after my internship both of us had like both of us gave the equal amount of uh, interviews till our internship got over no after our internship got over we had another final interview that time after like and both of us had it on the same day so i had it and that girl had it like an hour after me so after my interview i i i i wasn't contacted again for another interview i felt that my interview was good after i gave my interview and then i spoke to my manager i was like these were the questions that were asked in my interview i don't know how it went but i really hope that i get in so my manager was like okay don't worry about it we'll see but the other girl i guess her interview didn't go well so after the first interview and uh, after the first interview i guess they asked for another one so she gave another interview so that depends so if if i if i do well in my interview i'll proceed but if i don't do well there's another option that okay fine because since that girl has already interned at google she worked at google for 8 weeks she she got her training done and uh, and they invested so much they paid her so much for 2 months right they also wouldn't want to leave her they wanted to give her another chance so they went ahead with another interview right so that depends the number of interviews depends from person to person so i had five interviews she had six and then yeah that was it your main intern artifact what all you did in google along with how your interview went was the reason why i got a ppo uh, that's it again you know after interview how can a candidate you know be confident how when a candidate can be uh, confident uh, that my interview went very well or like is it like it's undeterminable okay so see uh, when you answer questions you will know if you did it right or not right so after my interview i was i mean i was scared yes i was telling people that you know i i don't know how my interview went but i knew that i was able to answer the questions so i told that i told the same thing to my manager but at the same time i was telling him i mean i don't think my interview went well because it was just an interview and it lasted for like an hour that's it so you i mean if you'll have that feeling if your interview went well or no but then i don't think i'm the right person to answer that because even though i felt that my interview went well i was still freaking out it was not i mean till the recruiter called me and told me okay fine you know your uh, packet i mean they call it a packet basically your packet is going to a hiring committee so i was like okay fine so i cleared the interview stage and my packet is going to go to the hiring committee right uh, obviously when i got that call i was like okay fine now that i cleared interviews and then again i was like okay fine now that it went to hiring committee i started googling what's the uh, rate of acceptance when uh, when your packet goes to the hiring committee at google and again i was figuring out because they were like again around 20% packets get rejected hiring committee is like five or six um googlers at high positions they'll sit in a conference room and uh, i mean uh, your profile will be projected and then then they'll take a decision so it has to be unanimous again so there are five people and all five of them have to tell okay fine hire 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 only then will i be hired if if two people say okay fine you know uh, lean hire or something like that that means okay this guy needs another interview so again it will come back again you have to give another interview again it will go to the hiring committee things like those
That, that's great. Uh, there's a question from chat box. I'm a second year uh, BTEC student from Tier 3 college. What should I do to make it to the Google? I was a second year student from Tier 3 college, but I made it. So, I mean, if you, one way of getting into Google is again, the re internal referral. I mean, I didn't get any because I didn't know anyone back then. But if you're applying off campus, one thing that you could do to get shortlisted is through referral. So if you know someone who's already working at Google, they can probably refer you. So people, they generally refer people. Okay, let's uh, take an example of my manager. All right, right now he's getting a lot of uh, requests for referral. So basically companies, what they do is once you, you know, you refer someone as an employee in your company and that that particular person makes it to Google. This person will get into Google and the person who referred will get a bonus, right? So they would want to refer you provided they find your profile interesting. I mean, they had they, and they can only like, I, I guess they can only give three referrals at a time. I'm not sure about that again, but yeah, they'll choose if your profile is good, they'll choose you and they'll refer you. So one way of getting into Google is to referral and not just Google, but any company, any good company, you can get in. I mean, you can at least get noticed because of preference. Um, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, am I audible now? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, how to get a good intern paid internship? Okay. So now there are two questions here. One is when when people hire you and they don't pay you. All right. And the second thing is, uh, right now as a student, when you apply to different startups, you get paid very less. All right. So there are two things now after like interning at certain companies. Now I know that I'm not going to work for a company who's not going to give me money because it doesn't make sense. I applied for a few startups. All right. And then they'll give you certain tasks to do. So one of the startups that I applied for, um, they gave me they asked me to build an API for them, for the company within a day with the login, log out and editing. I mean, editing your credentials, things like those. And that's hard to make in like uh, 12 hours. Right. But I did that again. They were like, uh, we have another task for you. Do this, make this. So indirectly, they were kind of taking work from me by telling me that these were my, these were my tasks. Right. And all this for an internship that, uh, I mean, they weren't going to pay me anything basically. So after going through those kind of companies, I, I feel that you shouldn't, I mean, I, I personally feel if you want to learn something, you can learn on your own, but I don't think you should work for a company who's not paying you. That is one thing to get a good paying internship. Again, uh, you have to come across companies that are actually willing to, uh, give you some amount of money. But as an intern, obviously you won't, you won't be earning much. So for the first internship that I did in 2019, I earned 4,000 rupees in a month. Oh, sorry. 4,000 rupees for two months. Right. And 4,000 for two months is nothing, but I got paid something. And then I learned something at the, I mean, I also learned something, right? You have to go uh, to answer that question. You'll have to go through different websites where companies are actually offering money and as in, I mean, see companies like Amazon and uh, Facebook, Twitter and all, they pay you well. All right. And they, I, I don't know, they pay you well at the same time, the exposure that you get is also good enough. You'll be able to contribute to their code, but I saw certain startups that don't pay money and I don't think you should go for that. That's amazing. Uh... Uh, either you have done numerous courses in different, you know, different uh, domains. You know, for me, while doing a course, I have certain doubts in my mind. Like, is that course really going to help uh, build my career or if the certificate will strengthen my resume? So what is your take on this online courses? Okay, so um, uh, what, uh, what branch are you from, if I may ask? Data mm. science. Right. So you must be having something in mind, right? I mean, after, after my engineering, I want to get into this domain. Correct. 
so for me i had i didn't have i, I mean i didn't i i didn't have a particular domain in my mind but i knew what i didn't want to do i didn't want i didn't want to get into ai and ml because i felt it was too much math for me and i'm weak at math so i didn't want to get into ai and ml that was one thing that i knew that i wouldn't do so i started exploring other options and i had my parents telling me you know focus on ai and ml that's the future but yeah ai and ml is the future but it's not the only future right so you have like various options to go for so i mean initial first two three months i started beaking everywhere so i was like i tried this front end development did it work for me yes or no okay it did so maybe i can go for this next at it back end development i started liking back end development then i was like okay fine i'll keep front end development aside i'll go for back end development i'll make servers things like those so at back of your mind you'll have an idea of what you want to do and again if you don't know what to do i reached out to my seniors to ask them you know what i should do so um uh, there were few seniors from it i don't know if you know them but jagannath and ishwar they were like my they were two years senior to me whenever i had a doubt i used to ping them so and that helped me a lot that helped me decide what i wanted to do so i chose back end and then okay fine i was like okay now that i chose back end maybe if i do courses in back end that will help me because after having something in my mind that i want to become back end engineer it won't make sense if i go for ai and ml if i do courses for ai and ml right so as long as you have an idea or at least you want to work on something go for those courses so initially i wanted to work on front end so i went for front end courses and then later i wanted to switch to back end i went for back end courses depends on that depend on what you want i mean all i'm saying is try everything before you make a decision because it shouldn't be later like okay fine i could have tried this but i didn't things like those that's a good point uh, again you know there are thousands of thousand difference of courses on a single topic you know how to choose the appropriate course for an individual for herself yeah so generally if you go on udemy and search for a particular course you have reviews right so many people took the course now for example um let's take a coursera andrew ng's machine learning course on coursera right i'm telling you i, I personally started that course seven times and i didn't even complete a week i wanted to start but i i just didn't feel like you know it was good enough for me i mean again it was too much math and i left i it's not like i didn't try i'm telling you i tried it seven times and i didn't cross one week also so one thing again i told this thing because if you ask anyone they'll tell you uh, andrew and these courses like very good for machine learning but that depends again on you right so talk to a lot of people before you choose on a course that is the one thing i mean if your seniors your seniors you know probably must have taken that course talk to them or they must be working on a particular technology you ask them which course should i do send them a list of courses that you found online because since you're starting you don't know i mean what all technologies will you cover in that particular course right but the person who's already working who's already using those technologies will know okay fine these things will help you so a particular course let's say you take a course on mern right mongo db express node js things like those so if they're covering certain topics some certain important topics in node js because they'll probably have a curriculum right they'll give you what all they're going to cover so if they have and if you send it to your senior your senior will probably know or someone who's working would probably know okay this course is completing i mean is uh, what do you say teaching you these important topics and this course isn't so go for this that is one thing second thing is obviously the reviews i i don't know to what extent those reviews are true on udemy but obviously as i mean as a student i wouldn't go for a course that's that hasn't been you know bought by many people so i'll go for the course that is extremely popular first second thing before buying a course i'd go for an opinion from my seniors or someone who's already worked on the course i mean who's already worked on those technologies and that's great yeah. uh, and you know apart from udemy or any other websites or colleges universities there are few certifications offered by different companies like google or microsoft or ibm what uh, how much uh, value this these certifications add to uh, us during recruitment yeah so google also has a lot of courses on coursera you have like way too many professional certificate 
again coming to microsoft you have many things you have student about student ambassador things like those right now the important thing here is um let's say i take up a course all right i take up a, i take a course uh, provided by google i pay some 7000 8000 rupees for that course okay no matter what course you take what course you buy it's 100% guaranteed that when you complete a course you'll get a certificate and you'll probably mention those certificates in your resume that you completed the certificate right now the thing is i'm giving an example let's say i'm not interested in a particular course but i just want to get it so that i can put it in my resume i buy a course i don't focus on anything all i do is watch videos while doing something else i come so on i'm telling this uh, in regards with udemy udemy may if you complete a video you get a tick once you complete a video then you go to a next video you get another tick once you get all the ticks you get a certificate irrespective of you working on those projects or not so all i'm telling is certifications do matter but only if you are able to implement the knowledge that you gained through those courses so i mean let's say i did a course on mon and i don't do any project on mon i go ahead i just put this thing on um let's say your linkedin or in my resume saying uh, i completed this thing i have a certificate in this the interviewer won't ask you i mean interviewer won't be happy that you did the course the interviewer will look for what practical projects did you implement after completing the course so you must have gained some knowledge right after completing the course how did you put that knowledge into practice that is important certifications are important yes but with respect to how much efforts you put i mean how how you worked on a practical project not just the theoretical knowledge that's a good point and uh, there's one more question from chat box how did your google it certifications help you getting internship so that is the thing i didn't do google it certification before my internship so i don't think that helped me get internship right it was only after that i got in i was like recommended okay fine you know it will be good if you do this but i didn't do that before i got selected for google it does help no i mean it explains you the basic concepts of troubleshooting and that particular course has i mean that that is such a beautiful course after completing every module you have someone from google that i personally know right he comes there i mean uh, he has a video on i mean he has a mock interview kind of video on the topics that you just learned so after you complete each module so that certification has like five courses i guess so after every course you have this guy coming up and mock interviewing someone right and what kind of questions do they generally ask things like those so that is important yeah it support certification not, not just that but any certification you do is important but that wasn't the thing that helped me get an internship Uh, and one more question is importance of dsa with development in hiring important of dsa with respect to the role that i'm in or with respect to interviews in general uh, it's in general in hiring is yes okay so yes data structures is extremely important you have to have basic knowledge of every data structure right only if you ha- i mean let's say the reason why they test you in data science is probably because they want to know how you logically think right because you uh, so far i didn't come across something that required data structures right because i mean i i know now i know that if i want to um store some values i can use a and if i want if i want to retrieve them quickly i'll use this particular data structure i know that but no one in google is going to come and ask me um can you find the third element here they're not going to do that the reason why they test you on data structures is just because they want to know how how well can you think logically so yes data structures is important and especially for core roles it's extremely important because they'll judge you on that so th- that is the reason why they have technical rounds first right because once you clear those two technical interviews once they get to know okay find this guy is good enough he he has logical thinking ability we can move him to hr that is the reason why they don't do hr before technical rounds it's basically like a trigonometry of data structure is basically like trigonometry of maths yeah so uh, you know 
you worked as an intern for front end projects too you know yeah. how the transition from a uh, front end pro- uh, developer to uh, this it residents so i mean uh, there there is not much of a transition as such because i'm i'm still going to work on front end projects i'm still still going to work on back end projects i'm going to work on things that i don't know so it's not like i'm it's not like two complete different things so front end did help me i mean i was again while making front end i so there is thing called i mean when you make a web page when you double click you have something called inspect element or developer tools so there if you open that in chrome because i've been using chrome uh, you get various options like console networking and stuff so when you click on network i mean you can see the bandwidth of your um, what do you say of your network like how well it's performing and no and how long is it taking for your website to load so things like those did help me to i mean get this role uh, there's another key project of yours uh, that is covid-19 tracker can you tell something about it so it was it was actually a failure but yeah so basically what happened initially uh, i mean I, i have a friend in pc his name is tejo so i called him i was like bro we have to do something it's pandemic i mean i'm getting bored at home let's come up with some idea so we were discussing like bluetooth tracing and stuff for covid now what happened what initially i mean what we were thinking initially was we'll come up with a system where uh, you'll get to trace people who came in contact with each other by the help of bluetooth right so people were still making applications at that time uh, and google and apple worked together for an api for the same and then trust me when we came up with the idea i actually started working on it and two weeks or three weeks later arogya setu came out so that like i mean i was like obviously arogya setu is done by government and then they'll make it mandatory for everyone to install i mean i shouldn't do it but later there were a lot of applications that were doing contact tracing but with the help of gps so personally i i mean i don't know how exactly arogya setu works but i mean i guess it has to do something with the location because it tracks using gps so using a gps and tracking people using gps is violation of the privacy so and then you'll obviously have your uh, battery getting affected right it will drain faster so what i like what we thought initially was we'll do something with bluetooth not gps so what we thought was um, let's say two people come in contact with each other they'll obviously probably have to have our app installed on their phones so what our app would do was uh, this person who is infected from covid came in contact with this person in a general store right so when this person uh, affected person comes in contact with a normal person they exchange a token so every device has a unique mac address all right every physical device has a unique mac address so what our app would do was it will generate a token so and it will map so this person met this person and this is the token exchange between them and it will store that token so let's say after like four uh, let's say after like four or five days the person who met the, i mean the person who met a normal who's who met a who met a healthy person basically uh, tested positive for covid right so what we would do was send a notification to that person that recently you came in contact with a person who has now tested positive for covid okay this doesn't violate privacy we wouldn't even tell this was a person who came, who you came in contact with it's just that this person who you came in con- i mean a person who you came in contact with has been tested positive for covid it's better if you take precautions you stay at home and you get a covid test done so this is what we thought initially but i was still learning back then so we we came up like i mean with a small thing where you could like uh store the bluetooth mac addresses of people who came in contact with each other but say, and like i told you i start, like when we started working on it arogya setu came up and google and apple announced that they are going to come up with the api and we kind of dropped the idea but then since we already made something you know i thought it will be better if we complete it so i went ahead and uh, we made a normal uh, application like as a project we made a normal application that uh, tracks covid cases and gives uh, faqs as well as your live basically your live data your news um, how many yeah, how many people are vaccinated things like those
Yeah, that's a great idea, irrespective of the outcome. Uh, this another question from chat box. How is an idea converted to a project in Google? So in Google, if you come up with an idea, you first initially have to, I mean, there are various steps. You initially have to make a design document, right? Um, your system design diagram. I mean, how many people is it going to affect? I mean, how many people is it going to impact? And then what is the use of this project? How is it going to help other people? And you first, initially, if you have something in your mind, you write that down in a Google Doc. You come up with the requirements. You come up with the obstacles that you might face. The kind of, let's say I want to make something um, to track if some people are changing their passwords often or not. Just an, I mean, just a random thing. So I need access to a certain thing certain, I mean, portal that will tell me this person has changed the password or not. So what are like uh, the possible roadblocks that I might face while working on the project? So I should basically come up with an entire design doc and requirements, roadblocks that I think I'll face. I can approach my manager, tell my manager this is the project that I think I should do. And I should also tell if this is a project that's going to impact people outside Google or people inside Google, right? If it's outside Google, that means it's public. So everyone like all the high uh, high end officials and all those people they have to come in and then they have to give their input if it's inside google is it specific to a single team or all the teams inside google right if it's specific to a single team then i have to go to that particular team's lead and i have to pitch in my idea if he likes it only then can i work on that particular idea so i mean there have been projects where i mean it depends at the end of the day, they, they might give you a go, but then if you don't come up with a nice, you know, an, I mean, what do you say? An, a nice performing project, they might reject that later. So you have to note down your requirements and everything, and then try to pitch and tell um, uh, pros. And I mean, obviously you'll uh, pros of uh, the project that you're coming up with. How can this thing eliminate the problems that we currently have? So yeah, that. I guess that sums up about the ideas to projects. Uh, initially, you have mentioned that you know networking is important at Google and not only Google, anywhere else, even outside Google. So you know, apart from social media, there are certain networking websites like LinkedIn or version control website like GitHub. You know how these help uh, individual to in boosting their career. So I start with LinkedIn, right? Uh, personally, if you ask me again, it, it might depend on, uh, I mean, depend on a person's preference, but personally, I feel that, uh, just uploading just because you did a certificate certification or something, you shouldn't go ahead and upload it on LinkedIn saying, you know, I completed a certificate rather, I'd rather have you do a project and upload that particular project and then mention, I did this certification and I was able to come up with this particular project. Right, that is one thing, and um, networking helps on LinkedIn. Yes, but I haven't been active on LinkedIn. But yeah, reaching out to people on LinkedIn also helps. But there are people again, you know, uh, people who post things like daily quote, and then they'll be like, "Do you agree?" Question mark. Question mark. I don't think those kind of posts will help you. Okay, fine. You have, let's say, you have around forty thousand followers on LinkedIn. You make such things that might impact people. Then yes, you can go ahead with those kind of posts. But have I mean you're still learning. You you still you just started. Things things I mean posts like those I don't think they make much sense. That is one. Coming to GitHub. GitHub is important definitely. I mean you mentioned projects on your resume, right? A good practice would be. Whatever project you did, upload that on GitHub. Write a very good readme. Again, I didn't do that yet. I mean I have to do that. But I'm just telling what I feel is right. You go to GitHub, you upload that particular project, you make a proper readme for the file, tell people who, who are going to fork your project later how to run it, and then give a nice description, get that link, embed it in your resume. So let's say if a recruiter is going through my resume, he found this project interesting. He's just a click away from seeing my code, right? So yeah, GitHub also helps. Both of, I mean, both of them help. It's not like they're not going to help you, but depends on how, they, how you use them. Let's let's say like how I did. I just uploaded my projects on GitHub. I didn't have anything. I mean, I didn't give a proper readme. That won't help. 
right? Because let's say if a recruiter wants me to, and I didn't even add the links to my resume. So if a recruiter wants to go through my project, the recruiter has to reach out to me and then I have to explain the code because I haven't written any readme. I have to explain this is what I did. This is how I run, and this is how I run the code. Things like those. Those are really valid points. Uh, uh, either you were not only part of many clubs, but you were also in good positions in them. So how were you able to manage time and how did it help you in time? Yeah, so like I told you, initial initial four semesters, I was way, I mean, I was way too much into clubs. Um, I tried being a part of every club. I wanted to experience everything. So in my first year, I mean, I, I got into MUN. First years weren't allowed, but then I requested seniors, so he let me in. And then uh, I joined Communicando. I, I joined as many clubs as I could, photography club, things like those. So I, I would tell, I mean, it's not the position that matters. It's the work that you do that matters. So it's not, I mean, it, 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 uh, it won't uh, make me stand out if, if I'm a president of a club, right? Let, let's take an example of COSA. I wasn't a president, I wasn't a vice president, I wasn't a general secretary, I was an external relations manager, right? In the hierarchy, I believe that, yeah, that was the lowest in the hierarchy, right? But the kind of work that I did, we worked as a team. So whatever the president did, even I did the same thing, right? So if people ask me about my experience and the position of, positions of responsibilities that I've been in, I can talk. I mean, I can talk the same things that my president is talking, right? Because both of us work together. So I could tell them that we we came up with a web development bootcamp for not uh, non-technical branches. And we taught them this. So positions, I mean, to some extent they matter, but it's the amount of work that you do. Let's say I'm a president and I don't do anything. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know it'll, if it'll be helpful, but I, I'll obviously, and how I manage, coming to how I manage, I was very poor in managing. I used to bunk classes. I mean, it again depends. I was in, extremely interested. So I used to bunk classes. I used to attend different um, seminars. I used to attend club meetings, things like those in the initial four semesters. Then I came to a conclusion, fine, I want to be a part of this club. I want to get into a core committee of this club. I want to get into a core committee of COSC, things like those. So after my initial like four, and the way that the, the clubs in our college, like, I mean, recruit core committee is depending on the work that you do in your initial phases, right? So I tried working hard in my initial phases and that helped me get good positions in the club at the end. And managing obviously requires your hard work as well. So if I, I mean, it's harmful if I'm just participating in, uh, clubs in club activities and not studying because I'll probably get detained if I'm not studying or if I'm not attending classes. So again, 75% attendance is must. And then, I mean, it's up to you if you want to attend more, but 75% and good co-curricular activities, I mean, and you're contributing to the club, it's more than enough. You don't have to have 85% or 90% of attendance. That sums up everything about So, either uh, like currently you're working at IT resident, like you are, uh, what uh, what are your future plans? Like, would you continue at IT resident or looking forward to work in different positions too? So, my eventual goal is to end up at Google only at some higher position, but I I had like a couple of things in my mind. So initially it was like if I don't get Google, I'm gonna go for masters. And then probably once I complete my master's, I'll have a chance to get into Google or any company as such. So that was my initial plan. But now that I got into Google, I mean, I still feel that I can get promotions with respect to my technical knowledge. If I work on my technical knowledge and come up with ideas or come up with some good amount of, what do you say, code and uh, good networking skills, things like those, I'll probably get promotion. But at uh, at some point, I'm if I want to move into a management position, I, I, I probably need an MBA. So I was thinking that I'll work at least for another two years. And my goal is to get a promotion. I mean, I, my goal is to like eventually get promotions, technical technicality wise. But um, if I don't get one, I'll probably go for an MBA later. I mean, if I, if I perform very bad and they kick me out of Google, I'll probably go for an MBA. 
and then once i'm done with my mba i'll probably sit and apply to all these companies and then because after an mba i'll be done with my studies and then at the same time if if need be let's say if i move if i wanted to move into a managerial position that requires um me having an mba i'd probably have that by then so that will help me so mba is an option yes but again like i haven't thought much i might go for an mba or i might not that's great i think that's it for this session uh, it's a delight talking to you either i guess sadhu can be your take up from you yeah um hi uh the, i guess that's it there are many more questions but uh, we've elapsed the time given for this event uh but we'll try to cover all these other questions on our instagram later on uh but yeah um thank you so much hyder for uh, taking your time off you really were very busy today and still uh if you really gave us time and try to cover all the questions that many people have google is a great thing and it's still a dream to many of us uh, and that's really great that you got in even though you had so many other things in um uh, in mind and you were super busy about everything else but yeah thank you so much uh, for coming